What up guys, Gangs Prankster here, bringing you the weekly wrestling review for May 12th. Welcome to the show. If you're new to the show, this is where we talk everything about professional wrestling, from news reviews to predictions, we talk about it all. So if you're a fan of professional wrestling, welcome to the show. Let's go through what we have in store real quick. We have reviews for Raw, SmackDown, Impact, Ring of Honor. We got predictions for two pay-per-views, Ring of Honor Border Wars and TNA Sacrifice. And a little bit of wrestling news. So let's jump into it right away. First off, we got WWE Raw. Starts out with John Laurinaitis. He comes out, talks about attacking Cena last week. Uh, CM Punk comes out and tells Laurinaitis he's a tool and he can't wait for Cena to kick his ass at Over the Limit. Laurinaitis says Punk will face Lord Tenzai later. Just a nice way to start the show by wrapping up what happened last week. First, we got Cody Rhodes vs. Big Show Intercontinental Title Match. Okay match. Show wins by a countout. Uh, next, we got Kofi Kingston versus Dolph Ziggler. Okay match. Ziggler wins. Uh, next, we got Michael Cole is in the ring for an interview with John Cena. They talk about Laurinaitis attacking Cena, and Cena basically says he wants to beat the shit out of Laurinaitis. Uh, next, we got Maxine and Natalia versus Kelly Kelly and Layla. Blah match. Kelly and Layla win. Uh, next, we got Randy Orton and Sheamus versus Chris Jericho and Del Rio. Good match. Jericho and Del Rio win. Uh, after the match, they had a backstage segment where there was a huge brawl backstage. And Laurinaitis makes the match for over the limit. It's going to be a four-way Orton, Sheamus, Jericho, and Del Rio. That should be a really good match. Can't wait for that. Um, next, we got Miz versus Brodus Clay. Pretty good match. Brodus wins. Next, we got the return of Paul Heyman. He comes out, talks about Lesnar's situation, says he's going to represent Lesnar. Uh, he reads a Lesnar, uh, a letter Lesnar wrote, and uh, Lesnar, what he wrote in the letter, it says uh, he feels betrayed by the by the fans, and he quit. He quit WWE. So this should be interesting having Paul Heyman back. Good to see him back. I don't know where this is what this is gonna lead to, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, last but not least, we got CM Punk versus Daniel Bryan and Lord Tenzai. Pretty good match. Bryan and Tenzai win. After the match, Bryan attacks Punk. Pretty good show for Raw. Good to see um, Paul Heyman back. Kind of, I don't want to say it was kind of a shocker. Because you knew with Brock Lesnar coming back that Paul Heyman wasn't far behind. Um, but with, for him to actually appear on TV was kind of shocking. Um, next we got TNA Impact, starts out with Robert Roode comes out and brags about beating up Hardy, Anderson, and RVD last week. Uh, Hardy, RVD, and Anderson didn't like that too much, so they come out and jump Robert Roode, but uh, it turns into a huge brawl and Hogan comes out and says there'll be a four-way tonight. Um, if Jeff Hardy and Anderson win, they get a title shot at Sacrifice. If Hardy win, or if Hardy and Anderson win, they get the title match at Sacrifice. If RVD wins, he gets to pick the stipulation for his match at Sacrifice. And if Robert Roode wins, he gets to pick his opponent at the pay-per-view. Um, next, we got Velvet Sky versus Brooke Tessmacher. Okay match, Brooke wins. Now, next, we got Matt Morgan versus Crimson. Match never happens after Bully Ray comes out and takes out Matt Morgan. Um, next, we got Austin Aries or Zima Ion for the X Division title. Pretty good match. Aries wins. Next, we got Kazarian and Christopher Daniels come out and they finally reveal the secret that they have over AJ Styles. Uh, it's they had pictures of him and Dixie Carter and I think one of them was him kissing Dixie. Uh, so holy shit, we had to wait like two and a half months to finally see what this was. And I'm going to be honest, I don't give a shit. I don't like the fact that Dixie Carter is getting involved in storylines. Especially this, like, stupid one. Like, it's okay if she's going to be involved for, like, the power of the company. Like, when it was her and Sting with against, like, Bischoff and Hogan because they were trying to take over the TNA. That's okay. But to be involved in this stupid feud where there's it's like a love triangle between AJ and Dixie and Kazarian and Daniels revealing it. I, I think it's so stupid. Like, it's such a waste of AJ, Daniels, and Kazarian when they can be used for so much more. Um, next, we got Robbie E versus Devon. TV title match. Okay match. Devon wins. Uh, next, we got Joseph Park comes out and says he's looking for his brother Abyss. Uh, he thinks Bully Ray is involved. Bully comes out and says he didn't do it. And this was just blah. I really didn't care about this. This whole Joseph Park thing. 
that's it's not interesting to me. I just I don't give a shit. This isn't the first time Abyss hasn't appeared. What about all fucking Douglas Williams? When's the last time he appeared on TNA? You know, no one's fucking worried about him. And so it's like I, I don't get this. You know, I don't care. Um, last but not least, we got Robert Roode versus RVD versus Jeff Hardy versus Mr. Anderson in a four-way. Pretty good match. RVD wins. Uh, he picks the stipulation for their match at Sacrifice. It's going to be a ladder match. That should be a pretty good match. Um, and after the match, Abyss makes his return and tells his brother to leave him alone. I don't know why he had to do this after this match and not when, you know, him and uh, Bully Ray were in the ring. Oh, wait, that's fucking right, because Abyss is his brother and himself. Because they're fucking stupid and it's retarded. So. Yeah, that was that. Um, we'll talk about Sacrifice later. Um, next we got SmackDown. Soto with Randy Orton versus Sheamus versus Alberto Del Rio and Chris Jericho. Pretty good match. No one wins because it breaks out into a huge brawl. This is pretty much what happened last week. Um, where Sheamus and Daniel Bryan had their match. And then Alberto Del Rio came out, got involved. And then they had their match later on. This, pr this pretty much happened again for the second week. I guess they can't come up with anything interesting, but whatever. Uh, ne first or next match, we got AJ versus Caitlyn. Blah match. AJ wins after the match. Daniel Bryan comes out and makes it seem like him and AJ are going to get back together. But he says he's interested in Caitlyn instead. Next, we got Big Show versus Daniel Bryan. Okay match. Bryan wins after Laurinaitis forfeits the match for Big Show. After the match, Laurinaitis says he wants an apology from Big Show on Raw. Uh, next, we got Ryback versus Heath Slater. Blah match. Ryback wins. Next, we got Antonio Cesaro versus Alex Riley. Okay match. Antonio wins. Still has that stupid finisher. Uh, what do you guys think about the finisher? Do you, like, I think it's just absolutely stupid. It's just so retarded. Uh, it's like, oh, look, he's going to go for a pile driver. Oh, wait, he fucking fell over and put him. I don't know. It's so bad. What are your guys' thoughts on this finisher? Leave it in the comments. Um, next we got Alberto Del Rio versus Randy Orton. Pretty good match. Orton wins by DQ. After the match, El Rio, Del Rio attacks Orton. Uh, next we got R-Truth versus Jack Swagger. Pretty good match. R-Truth wins. Uh, next we got Santino Morella and Zack Ryder versus Titus O'Neil and Darren Young. Okay match. Titus and Darren win. Uh, next we got Brodus Clay versus Unico. Blah match. Brodus wins. And last but not least, we got Chris Jericho versus Sheamus. Good match. No one wins after Del Rio interferes. After the match, Orton comes out and uh, they all hit their finisher on Del Rio. So that was SmackDown. Pretty good. Um, so next we got Ring of Honor TV. It starts out with Tommaso Ciampa versus Matt Taven. Pretty good match. Ciampa wins. I said Tommaso Ciampa, right? Oh, Tommaso, I feel like I fucked that up. So, Tommaso Ciampa versus Matt Taven. Pretty good match. Ciampa wins. Uh, next, you got TJ Perkins versus Mike Mondo. Pretty good match. Mondo wins. After the match, Mondo and the Young Bucks attack Perkins until the All Night Express make the save. I feel like I'm fucking up. I f really do. Um, whatever. i am got to stop second-guessing myself. Uh, next, we got Kyle O'Reilly versus Kevin Steen. Good match. Steen wins. After the match, Steen and Jimmy Jacobs attack O'Reilly. Uh, and Davey Richards makes the save, but he gets he tries to make the save, but he gets taken out as well. So that was Ring of Honor. It was pretty good. And if you want to know how to watch Ring of Honor, what you want to do is you want to go to their website, ROHWrestling.com, sign up for an account, make the free account, and you can watch the show every Thursday on their website. What you can also watch on their website is their pay-per-view, which is coming up this weekend on Saturday. I'm super excited for this pay-per-view. It's called Our Ring of Honor Border Wars. Uh, they're coming to my backyard, Canada. I couldn't go to the show. It's very disappointed because I'm, I'm really excited. This card looks amazing. And uh, let's just go through it real quick. So first off, we have Michael Elgin versus Adam Cole probably going to be the the first match that happens just a nice match to start up and for Michael Elgin to win since he's the hometown hero pretty much he's a Canadian so I'm gonna go with Michael Elgin to win next we got TJ Perkins and All Night Express versus Mike Mondo and the Young Bucks uh, this should be a fun six man I'm gonna go with TJ Perkins and All Night Express nah yeah I'm gonna go with TJ Perkins and the All Night Express um, next we got Jay Lethal versus Tommaso Ciampa uh, this should be a good match. I I want to go with Jay Lethal, but I think Ciampa is going to win. 
and continue his um, his winning streak. So I'm going to go with Ciampa, but I would like to see Jay Lethal win. Uh, next, we got Eddie Edwards versus the War Machine Rhino, former WWE, ECW, TNA star, uh, making his return to, to Ring of Honor. Going to take on Eddie Edwards. This should be a good match. I'm super excited for this one. Uh, I'm going to go with Eddie Edwards simply because I think he's uh, I think he's going to get a world title match pretty soon. But we'll have to see how the um, the main event pans out. So maybe Eddie Edwards is going to go into a feud with the House of Truth. We'll just have to wait and see. But I'm going to go with Eddie Edwards on this one. Uh, next we got Lance Storm versus Mike Bennett. This is the rematch from the last pay-per-view, Showdown in the Sun. And last time Lance Storm lost. So I think he's going to pick up the win this time, especially there in Canada. And this is supposed to be his last wrestling match. At least last, last um, like, big wrestling match. So I think he's going to go out on a win and uh, beat Mike Bennett. So that's that. Next, we got the Briscoes versus Wrestling's Greatest Tag Team Fight Without Honor match for the ROH Tag Team titles. Fight Without Honor match, I think it's pretty much a hardcore match. I'm not sure uh, if it is. Fight Without Honor, it's not, I, I'm not, it's not ringing a bell to me right now, but I think this is a hardcore match pretty much. Um, I'm going to go with the Briscoes on this one, and finally, they're going to get the one up on Wrestling's Greatest Tag Team in this feud. And uh, we'll see. We'll have to see where the tag team division goes next, because these are pretty much the two top guys in the uh, in the tag team division. I would like to see Michael Elgin and Rhino team up. That I think that would be an interesting team, because they're in the House of Truth. Roderick Strong's already the TV champion, so why not have Rhino and Michael Elgin team up and try and get the tag team titles? I think that'd be really interesting, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, next, we got Roderick Strong versus Fit Finley for the ROH TV title. Again, Fit Finley, former WCW and WWE star, um, will be ma making his debut on Ring of Honor. This should be a good match. Fit Finley is a great wrestler. Uh, Roderick Strong is a great wrestler. So this should be a hard-hitting match. Roderick likes to give those chops. Uh, Fit Finley is a tough guy. You know, he's an Irishman. Uh, I just I expect a really good match, and I expect Roderick to take this. I don't think Finley is going to win the TV title. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to go with Roderick on this one. And last but not least, we got Kevin Steen versus Davey Richards, ROH, TV, or ROH World Title match. Um, I'm so excited for this match. Ever since Kevin Steen returned, they've been hyping the hell out of this, and I am so excited. I think Kevin Steen's going to win, take the world title, take over Ring of Honor, take it hostage, and, um, and yeah, I think it should be really exciting to see. I think they're going to do, um, a, like a screw job finish, like, you know, Montreal screw jobs when I have another screw job because they're in Canada. Uh, I think Jimmy Jacobs is going to get involved. Kyle O'Reilly is going to get involved. Maybe even Steve Carino, Jim Cornette. I think everyone's going to get involved. Um, I, this is going to be a really good match. I'm super excited. I'm going to go with Kevin Steen to win the world title. And uh, take Ring of Honor hostage and bring in, really put it forth, wrestling's uh, worst nightmare. So, super excited for this pay-per-view. It's going to be $15. You can watch it on Ring of Honor's website. So, go there, ROHWrestling.com. Go buy the pay-per-view. Uh, I'll be reviewing it next week. And I'm super, super, super excited. So, next we got TNA Sacrifice. Uh, it looks like a good card. I'm not as excited for it as... Um, what's it called it's border wars but it's still a pretty good show let's talk about it real quick so first off we got devon versus rob robbie e and rob terry in a handicap match for the tv title uh this should be pretty good i expect this to open the show uh as you guys know i'm not too excited about devon being champion so i'm gonna have to go with robbie e on winning the t title here um next we got gail kim versus brooke Tessmacher, knockouts title match uh, I like Brooke, but if Gail Kim's not going to drop it to Velvet, she's definitely not going to drop it to Brooke Tessmacher. So I expect Gail Kim to retain. Uh, next, we got Austin Aries versus Bully Ray. Uh, it should be a good match. I've been liking the feud so far. I'd like to see Aries win. But one thing I have a problem with this. Well, not a problem, but I don't know if they're going to have... Okay, so Bully Ray on the Impact... 
uh, leading up to this. You know, he attacked Matt Morgan and took him out, so that leads to a possible feud when Morgan comes back. Uh, you get the whole Joseph Park thing, so maybe an Abyss versus Bully Ray feud. Um, so I don't know. I think this is going to be the end of their feud, so I think Austin Aries is going to win. Maybe Abyss will make a, uh, an appearance on the pay-per-view. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, so I'm going to go with Austin Aries on that one. Next, we got Samoa Joe and Magnus versus Christopher Daniels and Kazarian for the tag team titles. I'm going to have to go with Christopher Daniels and Kazarian right now. Samoa Joe and Magnus. Uh, they haven't done shit since they're, they've been tag team champions. So, uh, you know, Christopher Daniels, Kazarian, I think they're good. I think they they could be a really good tag team, so why not give them the... I'm really stuttering, stuttering over my words right now. I apologize. I think Daniels and Kazarian should win, win the tag team titles. And, uh, I, again, this they're having a match for the tag team titles, but we're... we're, we're uh, <laughs> stuttering again. What about the feud with AJ Styles and the whole Dixie Carter thing? I have no idea. Um, but I'd like to see Daniels and Kazarian win. Um, next we got Jeff Hardy versus Mr. Anderson. I'm going to have to go with Jeff Hardy. I think Hardy's going to win and then take on Robert Roode at Slammiversary. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Next we got Kurt Angles versus AJ Styles. This this kind of came out of nowhere. I don't know why they're having a pay-per-view. <laughs> Uh, pay-per-view match, you know, they had the match on Impact, and Daniels and Kazarian got involved, and Kurt Angle's like, you know, fuck that, I want a, a real match, and, uh, I don't know, this this feud is confusing, I don't know why they're having a match on the pay-per-view, uh, but I'm gonna go with Angle, I think Christopher, oh, okay, this just came to me, okay, so what if Christopher Daniels and Kazarian win the tag team titles, and then take on AJ and Angle at the next pay-per-view at Slammiversary for the tag team title. I think that could be a really good match. We'll have to wait and see. That'd be interesting. That'd be in that just came to me. Um, last but not least, RVD versus Robert Roode ladder match for the TNA World Title. I like RVD, but I'm gonna have to go with Robert Roode. Uh, I don't think RVD should beat him. I think Robert Roode should win. I to be honest, I said he should take Jeff Hardy on at Slammiversary. But I think he's going to take on Sting at Slammiversary. Remember, if you guys remember, or have been following the Weekly Wrestling Review for a while now, uh, when he first became champion and the whole thing with Sting, I'm like, you know, this is going to eventually lead to a feud or a match with RVD or Robert Roode and Sting for the world title, and Sting will win. I'm still going to go with that. I think that's going to happen at um, Slammiversary. Either that or RVD. We'll have to wait and see, but I think Robert Roode's going to win the ladder match, and uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, but overall, TNA Sacrifice, it looks pretty good, um, but I'm definitely more excited for our Ring of Honor Border Wars. So, And it's half the price of, uh, of TNA Sacrifice, so that's another plus. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Next, we got some wrestling news. First off, Goldust has been released from WWE. Sad news, but... As you guys know, I'm a pretty big fan of Goldust, but uh, he hasn't been doing anything lately, so I guess you can release him. I guess he's expendable. I think there's a bunch of other people that are expendable, but that's just me. Uh, there's apparently an incident that happened that led to his release, so that's unfortunate. And uh, yeah, so sad news. Hopefully he doesn't go to TNA because I don't want to see Black Rain ever again. And uh, yeah, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens with Goldust. Uh, next, we got TNA has signed King Mo. Uh, for those of you who don't know, he is an MMA fighter who's going to be wrestling in TNA and fighting for Bellator Fighting Championship. It's another MMA thing that's on Spike. Uh, this kind of reminds me of the Bobby Lashley situation. You know, when he came to TNA, he's like, I want to do wrestling and MMA. And that didn't work, if you remember correctly. Another thing... I was reading the comments in the article of this, and it, somebody brought up, like, is this TNA's response to Brock Lesnar coming back to WWE? Uh, you know, having an MMA guy and whatever, bringing realism to wrestling. Um, so, yeah, he he is an amateur wrestler, so it does have some potential. But for the most part, I'm not looking forward to this. I don't think MMA and wrestling can work well together bringing in MMA fighters to wrestling 
I just think it looks stupid. I've said this before. Um, it's either like if you if you were to put him in a match with somebody, um, like it's either the fake wrestler beats the real fighter and makes MMA look stupid, or the real fighter beats the wrestler and makes wrestling look stupid. So it's a lose-lose situation, so I'm not really looking forward to this. I think it's dumb. I think MMA and wrestling should just stay apart, and that's just me. Um, last but not least, we got John. some sad news for John Cena. He's getting a divorce. Uh, he filed divorce from his wife. Luckily, he got a prenup, which is where his wife can't take all his money. Um, an interesting note is Cena's wife, or ex-wife, I guess, hired a lawyer who just so happened to represent Linda Hogan um, when she was going through her divorce with Hulk Hogan. And uh, if you know anything about that divorce, it was really, really bad. It was nasty. There was some nasty shit. And uh, Linda ended up taking all of Hulk's money. So uh, that's, yeah, so... We'll have to see where this goes, but um, WWE has some pretty good lawyers, so I think Cena's safe, but uh, there's probably going to be some horrible stuff for him. And uh, another thing I want to talk about real quick is this, there's another uh, report, some off topic here. Uh, someone reported to a wrestling website, you know, he tried to get a, a autograph for Cena, and Cena kind of just brushed the guy off. And then the guy went on a tirade saying, you know, Cena's a jerk and all this shit. And then he's like, oh, I take it back. I didn't know he was going through a divorce. And again, I read the comments and someone's like, you know, Cena does all these Make-A-Wish foundations. And he's such a good guy. And the one time he's a douchebag, it gets reported. It's like, what? Like, give the guy a break. You know, he's going through a divorce. He has He works over like 300 days a year. Always on the road, always away from his family. The guy, he's he's making a lot of money, but is it worth it at the end of the day, at the end of the day? You know, he just lost his wife and stuff. So um, yeah, so some hard times for for uh, John Cena. I wish the best for him. And uh, yeah, so that was that. Thanks for that was it for the weekly wrestling review. Come back next week where we have reviews for. TNA Sacrifice, Ring of Honor, Border Wars, Raw, SmackDown, Impact, Ring of Honor, and I think predictions for for Over the Limit. I think that pay-per-view is next week. Don't quote me, though. So uh, it should be a packed show next week if I, if I think Over the Limit. I think it is. So, yeah, that's that. I want to thank you guys for watching. Take care. Peace out.